Battle of Buxar, 1764, Mir Qasim was an efficient administrator. In the beginning he remained loyal to the company. He paid 2 lakh pounds to the company and gave away few places to it. Shortly, he declared himself as an independent king. After verifying the misuse of dustikats, he declared that the business is duty-free in Bengal. As a result, the Indians competed against British in all spheres of business. As a result, the British trade suffered considerably. This was enough for the British to oppose the Nawab. They brought in Mir Jafar again and dethroned Mir Qasim. As Mir Qasim knew about the cunningness of the British, he went for an organized war against them. He was supported by the Indian merchants and artisans. Mir Qasim entered into agreements with the Mughal ruler Shah Alam II and Nawab of Awad, Sahaj Uddal. The combined forces of Mir Qasim faced the British army led by Hector Munro at Buxar in 1764. Mir Qasim got defeated and ran away from the battlefield. Shah Alam II surrendered. The efforts of the combined forces to stop the British force failed completely. Outcomes 1. Shah Alam II accorded the Dawani rights over Bengal to the British. 2. Shah Alam II gave away all the rights over Bengal to the British for an annual fee of Rs 26 lakhs. 3. The Nawab of Awadh had to give away a fine of Rs 50 lakh for waging a war against the company. 4. With the death of Mir Jafar, the company paid pension to his son and took over the entire administration of Bengal. Dawani writes, the right, to collect land taxes. The Buxar battle made the British as the real holders of power over Bihar, Bengal and Orissa provinces. Even Awad remained under their control. In 1765, Robert Clive brought in, dual government, concept. As per this concept, the British had the right to collect land taxes, whereas the Nawab had power over administrative issues like justice and others. Like this, the British gained political control over India to protect their business interests.